Helangor, sjung hopp för alla la la lej Helangor, sjung hopp för alla lej Och den som inte helan tar han heller inte halvan får Helangor And now you drink And then you sing Hopp oh, oh, för alla la lej Oh, are we supposed to be the whole thing? I don't know Oh, oh you like oh. it We picked Scandinavia for a couple reasons. We picked Scandinavia as a little bit of a curveball. We picked Scandinavia because it was a curveball. Everybody said that. <laughs> My mother-in-law's family is from uh, Sweden, and there's not a whole lot of places that are nicer in July and August than Scandinavia. I think we wanted to lean back into the tourist part of tourist sauce. We wanted a little bit more off course focus. There's only so many drone shots you can get of golf courses and, and so much you can talk about strategy and angles and width. We wanted a little bit more joie de vivre and off course uh, focus for this. And then two, I think it's a part of the world, especially in a golfing sense, that just hasn't been showed off that much yet. I think a lot of the places we visited in recent years, we have a pretty clear picture of what we're going to get and the story we want to tell, but it's different with this one. I was expecting, well, I will say this, I didn't have a lot of expectations, and I don't think there's a lot of places in the golf world anymore where that's true. <laughs> I had no idea what to expect. I was expecting firm, fast, links golf, which a lot of the courses really weren't. They're rabid golfers. That was my biggest takeaway. You would think it's a short season and it's cold a lot of the year and not a great place to grow grass, but they take their summers seriously and they take their golf seriously. Very unfamiliar for most of us. The more I play golf and we go to these beautiful golf courses, you have an expectation. It's like walking into an art museum and somebody telling you, this is how you should feel about this art. You learned about it in art, art history class or whatever. The, the best museum experiences that I've had are when you walk in and you just get floored by what your eyes see. Um, and that's how I felt going to Scandinavia. I didn't know much about it, didn't have a lot of expectations. I, I wanted to go in with a fresh perspective, fresh eyes, and just take it all in. We're going Nibrogaten to Linnegaten to Sturgaten to Kungsgaten. <laughs> Neil, how was your flight, man? Flight was overall solid. You know, I, I, the no, Delta's I wanna, process is dialed. I want to hear the full story. All right, I've made it to JFK, an absolute disgrace at uh, the Sky Club. The line's 50, 60 deep. Just, it's not moving, it's not good. Um, but I did run into uh, an associate of mine here in the airport. Oh, 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 cheers, how are we? Wi-Fi wasn't working on the plane, some glitchy entertainment. Beer Flight attendant kind of tried to give us a warm beer. So not, and he said, well, I can give you some ice. I said, no, sir. That's not how it works. That's not what we're doing. And then Randy, four <laughs> seats behind me, he asked for a Miller Lite, because that's how the strap boys roll. And he tried to give him the same warm Miller Lite. And Randy said, no, thank you. To me. And Randy said, sure, I'll take it. TC, what are you looking forward to the most? Just excited to get away from all this live talk. You know, really, uh, I'm just, I'm burned out a little bit. Guys, I'm not gonna lie, it was nice uh, living the way TC lives. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, they just came by to ask if I wanted water or champagne. 
<laughs> shared prosperity, though. Right? It was unbelievable. I'm never going to go back. I might just stay here so I don't have to get on another plane. Please. Welcome yeah. to how TC hey, lives. Hey, great to see you guys. Hey, how are you? I haven't even talked to you about the Lufthansa Center lounges, the the the, the Alpine Lounge in Zurich. They, I'm going to investigate that. Swiss just kicked me out of the uh, business lounge. It's going to be a no for them, dog. We're going to Munich. Yeah. So you're going to Zurich. We're going to eat some pretzels and beer when we land. Y'all aren't going together? No, we need, we need a designated survivor. No. Yeah. Stockholm is a very regal city. It's very old money. It's very, when you think of Sweden, you think of Stockholm. I'd been to Stockholm before when I lived in Europe. Coming back after living in the States for five years, I was blown away. I love Stockholm. Great city for a lot of reasons. Hadn't traveled abroad in, in a long time. And so it was really fun to get to a city that it just has history. The food, the drinks, the culture, the scenes, the buildings, the architecture, the walks. The time of year we were there, everybody's on vacation. Uh, the city kind of shuts down in July. Everybody takes the month off. They take summer seriously. We are off the clock, guys. We are gonna, we are, we are, <laughs> we're not gonna be here. And so everybody goes out to their cottage in the archipelago or their lake house inland or their cabin down in the south. It's a pretty quiet time of the year in Stockholm, but probably the nicest time of the year in Stockholm as well. Who's gonna be my Fika partner? I'd be happy to happy to help you out there. Fika? Fika, that's like their coffee culture. Fika is like a certain kind of coffee? No, it's like, it's like getting, it's like the act of getting coffee. All right, we're doing a strict no Google policy. Yeah. No Googling on oh, random great. bits of trivia. Sorry, who was the baseball closer that had the sixth finger? Um, <laughs> Alfredo Simon? No, but Alfredo no, I, I felt like you were, I, you kind of caught me like, <laughs> it's so close. Octavio something. Octavio Dotel? No, he him. didn't have the sixth no, finger. No, it's not him. But great pull. What's that? You're talking about Dotel? <laughs> no. Was he the guy with six fingers? No. Who was the guy with six fingers? All right, we're gonna come back to you on this. Hold on. Joel Zumaya? No. So the first night we spent in Stockholm, we went over to Ann and T's apartment. Yeah, so we're like in Södermalm, which is like Brooklyn. It's like where Neil would live, you know, very, very trendy. It's wow. the uh, hipster. Yeah. No, it, hipster, I mean, it is uh, like, it's Brooklyn, uh, right? it's like Brooklyn. Yeah. We are seeing Anne and T. They're not married. They've been together for a long time. Uh, Anne is my wife's aunt. So she's my mother-in-law's oldest sister. Very much what you would think of when you would think of Swedish advertising professional. Just very, very great style, great taste. I think they met in Berlin. He was a DJ. I don't know, he's just kind of a, he's just a cool freaking guy. <laughs> As, aspirational vibes, yeah. these two. Yeah. yeah. Very we, cool, yeah. very cool couple. You need help carrying that? No, I'm good. Welcome. Hey. hey. How are you? Hey. 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 Nice to see you. Yeah, excited to see them. And then I think Pear is going to be there as well. Pear is, uh, Hell yeah. Pear is uh, Alex's uncle. Uh, huge golfer. Actually played on the Scandinavian tour for a bit. So why'd you pick what you picked here? Well, the entire theme for this evening is the best that Sweden has to offer compared to the US, I would say. Everything in Sweden is smaller and sweeter than they are in the US. Yeah. This is the gold of the north. Yeah. Okay. This was what, the caviar? Yeah. Yeah, I don't eat it. It's too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the coffee or is it the act no, of getting coffee? the act of getting a coffee. I mean, the act of, I mean, it's actually taking a pause. But the union wanted the, the, the laborers oh, to, so coffee break. to have a yeah. coffee break. Fika pause, a fika break. Um, How long are the breaks? I would say 15 minutes. You get that for pregnancy in the US, I think. <laughs> <laughs> How does the golf? culture work in Sweden? Is it mostly private clubs? Is it? Uh... No, you know, it's, it's, 
it's it's all public. There's only one totally private club in the whole country. It's a member. There. It's it's a, <laughs> <laughs> four times a week. No, it's Swedish golf. If you compare it to American private clubs, it's a t it's incredibly different because the cost of golf in Sweden is nothing. It's absolutely crazy how cheap it is. I'm a member. I'm a member uh, in the south of a club with 36 holes. My annual fee is. Seven hundred dollars, and it's unlimited play. You don't you don't pay anything extra. Would you rather do that or play TBC Sawgrass once? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's up to you. How was that possible, though? Because it's very it, it's strapped. It, 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 co your language strapped. It's it's you don't have anybody in the in the locker room or you don't have any. You know, you have a restaurant, you have a bar, you have a golf shop, and you have a, a few uh, employees doing maintenance. The other thing is yeah, that really Swedish lines. golf is very competitive. What is a gimme? Doesn't exist. <laughs> oh, oh wow. let's go, baby. <laughs> it's truly a sport. What is this? Bitter drops. Bitter drops. It's, it's made out of a herb that is quite dangerous, actually. If you have too much of that herb, you, you, you get poisoned. See, it's like everything else. So, okay. that's so we're, why you're we're just trying to thread that needle, huh? That's why you have this small bottle. <laughs> oh, it gets worse than that? <laughs> oh, you, you like know, it? In industrial that's things. great. What a car. Task. What? Tack. <laughs> Tusk in Sweden is your genitals. <laughs> which, which is, you know. Let's say it. You know what that tastes like. <laughs> All right, what do we have? What's the next course? Swedish meatballs. The Sweet? true Swedish meatballs. What makes the fake Swedish meatballs? I mean, we don't steam them. We just fry them and we spice them up. And it's, uh, it's the best meatballs in the world according to um, everyone with authority. <laughs> okay, well in Sweden we eat Swedish meatballs with mashed potatoes, pickled cucumbers and uh, lingonberries. And don't forget the cream sauce. And the cream sauce which is like spiked with Swedish cognac. So everything is like <laughs> as Swedish as... So we're going to have the weirdest hangovers ever tomorrow. <laughs> These are proper meatballs. But yeah, there's, there's no there's fucking no Ikea sauce. meatballs here. <laughs> I tell my American friends that, you know, Stockholm, that's just, just about Anchorage, Alaska. Yeah. That far north. They go, what? Can are you, you get there? Is, is that possible? We have six hours of daylight in December and we have... Six hours? Mm -hmm. No. It's yeah. less. You when you wake up in the like in the morning to go to work, it's dark. When you come home, it's dark. It's dark. So sunsets are like two forty-five. Yeah. But the, but in June the sun never goes down, so it's yeah, like so it's, it's light until three o'clock in the morning, and then four o'clock in the morning the sun comes up again. And and you guys are going even further up north, right? And this probably still going to be midnight sun in Lofoten, for example. If you, you can also see the difference in, in how Swedes are. I mean, in 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 during winter time. Everybody is very more, much more into their things. You know, it's very introvert. As of like April, May, when the sun comes and the summer, everybody's out, outgoing, doing things. You know, it's like two different type of way of living your life. This was so 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 good thank you guys so much seriously yeah this was what a night one of the best swedish meals i've ever had i agree <laughs> i agree completely <laughs>
some middle tier stuff that's that kind of shine a light on places that are doing really cool stuff that are bringing their course up to that elite level like a Visby or like a Barsabek. And then you want to go play some kind of neighborhood courses too. You want to play some places that real Swedes play on an everyday basis that aren't just the super expensive or resorty ones. You want to play where real people play. Stockholm Golf Club, just really, really funky, cool course. I mean, just feels like it's it's been there forever and in a place where golf is young, I think that that's, uh, it, it, in a way, to me, it felt like this is where it started. That there's history, there's um, like a little bit of pedigree, uh, but it was also just very unique and, and not what I expected the golf course to look like at all. I think that was a perfect first stop for us. I really like golf courses that feel like they're hemmed in by their surroundings. And in this case, it's, you know, it's a big city. Stockholm Golf Club both feels like an escape from the city, but you're also still in the city. It's a good blueprint for how to dust off and improve a course with immense history and do it in the right way that's not going to upset the apple cart. We did play Stockholm in a period of transition. They've been doing a lot of work on the golf course. It's kind of in the middle of a renovation and I loved it. I thought it was so cool how perched up the tee boxes were, how much they created out of a very tight space. I picture Stockholm Golf Club like I would any golf club that's kind of named for a city in the United States that I've played. It's It was a, a fantastic walk. I love the par threes, especially on the back nine. I love the up and down nature of it, the slopes, the ball above your feet, ball below your feet. I'm thrilled that there is a place like this that the public can go and play golf. It feels like it kind of should be a private golf course. It doesn't feel like a course that anyone should have access to, but that's just the nature of golf in Stockholm. And gosh, if I lived in Stockholm and it was a, you know, overall 30 minute commute via subway to get to this golf course, that would be the dream. So I would do that every single weekend. Have you ever taken a train to a golf course before? Uh, Winter Park. Are we going to look like dorks with our clubs? Absolutely. Why does everybody else get to ride in the BMW? Direct, no, don't hold it down. <laughs> Directions to Stockholm Golf Club. Oh shit, it's hooked up to my phone. One moment. Why are you just looking up on your phone? Because I don't have service. I can't figure out how to work the cellular stuff. Still on it. Switch to English, please. Just plug your phone in. I, no, I, we're going to do it the right way, okay? One possibility I see is Kansanjin Golf Club on Garpabadavajin in a plans uh, world. Oh. <laughs> is that the one you want? No, stop. I hear you're playing Shiavinge tomorrow, which is Stockholm Golf Club. Yes. What did you call it? Shiavinge. Yeah, that's the that's the name Stockholm for it. Golf Stockholm Golf Club. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna go with Shevinga. Everybody that knows the place call it Shevinga. It's like Hoy Lake for the Royal Liverpool, right? Do you know anything about this place? Uh, a little bit about it. Harry Colt design, I believe. You can't believe it's in the middle of town because I when I go there, I take the subway. No transfers, and then eight minute walk once we get there. short it's a short course and they have unfortunately had to uh, constrain it a little bit because of uh, building houses and stuff but it's a, it's a classic classic course and now they've renovated it the bunkering is supposed to be great what would we have seen two years ago here what, what was different a completely different property really uh, we've redone all bunkering we've done five new greens and then redone all green surrounds really harry Colt was famous for finding these green sites just as you were talking about perching them away on slopes and kind of into corners and stuff like that and i think that's what i first time i walked around out here that's why like we need to bring this back to harry Colt. we need to bring the heathland style even if Maybe not all of it was Harry Cole back in the days because it was his associate Morrison, but you can see his style. God, my body feels so bad. Coming in very unsure of my game, I guess. I feel like this climate's good for you though. I've played like one 18 hole round of stroke play golf, I think in the last about three or four months, just moved. I'm most concerned about the pie, man. 
Well, he's the highest he handicap your, well, right now. I know, and, and he has your number. Yes. My game is is not good enough to take down Solly on this trip. So if if I do get matched up against him, I've got I've got a full tanimal outfit that I think I'm gonna wear to <laughs> try to totally throw him off. That's my only chance. Still got a little bit of the, a mental edge, though. for sure. Right. He but that's only worth a couple always, strokes. Yeah. Honestly, I think Tron Tron's gonna feel that home game. Yeah. You know, very pride of Sweden. Went out to Sawgrass and played nine holes, played the back nine on the stadium course the other day, which is really, really good decision. When your game feels like shit, your body feels like shit, you haven't played for a while. I did, I moved last week, uh, so I'm still sore from that. Based on what I saw at Sawgrass before we left, don't need to worry about Tron. <laughs> right. And we got a gerbil last week. <laughs> which was unexpected, apparently. Yeah, not cool. So got a lot going on in my world right now. When Neil gets his tempo going after playing hickories, that could be bad. Solly's handicap's a little light right now. Solly could be dangerous. He has this lurking, massive right miss. Like one of the biggest right misses I've ever seen. The likes before. of which we've never Time seen. Time is a flat circle. <laughs> Game is, is solid. I think really solid, but we haven't been, we don't know. It's a bit of, bit of an unknown, but I'm hoping for <laughs> known unknowns though. I think a lot of people in the media have been talking about, uh, you know, Neil took him a long, long, long time to win one of these, but you know, it's a potential Duval situation. Is it, you know, do the floodgates open once you get one? That was such a patty cake match though, the last one at Grey Walls. You guys played so bad. It's true, and I think there's a lot of things you can- Oh yeah, you guys played great that round, <laughs> look like. We, 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 we did. Yeah, we shot two under. Yeah, it looks <laughs> like you guys really stole the show. <laughs> what, it was 88 for you and 89 for you, TC? Neil, what's your handicap right now? 2.6. DJ? 7.7 .7 or something? Randy's down in that range. I think well. Randy's about like almost identical to me. Yeah. We don't have to worry about Randy. Rush me! No, I mean, <laughs> Randy's so hard to play though when he just starts. Yeah, but making when he's not getting 10 pop pops, <laughs> exactly. like that's when he's hard to play. Are they gonna have um, meters or yards Ooh, on all the signage, do you think? I know this means up in the Swedish. <laughs> Oh, I, see I think that's it. Oh, here bunkers. we are. All right. Oh my goodness. More elevation than I would have expected. Seriously. I'm just gonna reset. I'm gonna cleanse the system with the hickories. I hear some of you are gonna play hickories. Yeah. Are we doing a jacket match tomorrow? I have a jacket hanging up. You know, we were having these great matches and we, you know, kind of realized we needed to, we needed something to put on the line. This was a jacket that I won in a hickory tournament. Uh, it was a team event, not an individual event. Who won that individual event? It, it was not an individual event though. That's okay. like the whole point. And so the winning team got these beautiful jackets. Neil was fucking pissed. So today will be kind of the, my first chance to earn it back. We've got Ollie Wiedegren, who's I believe playing with us, who is the uh, World Hickory Champion. Is that correct, Tron? Allegedly. Well, he can't. He can't play for. He that will yet. not. He's not eligible for the jacket. <laughs> the NX10s have this replaceable plate, and I, you said you had all kinds of avant quote avant garde shit. Yeah, I got some dancing me. bears for you. <laughs> okay. I did a Taurus sauce Viking shit. I'm gonna go with the crown. <laughs> What's the Uncle Juice? <laughs> Uncle Juice. It's my. It's my good friend AC's <laughs> white Bronco. I'm just gonna get out in front of it. I'm going with the Ikarito. I like it. Ikea one. Hello, how are you? Welcome. Hi, nice hey, Tron, nice to meet you. Hello, Uber. Hey, hi, DJ. Tron, nice oh, to meet you. Great to meet you, Ollie. I have a sample of two clubs for you to choose between. Yeah. And Ollie is the world champion. That's, that's what we hear. I've only played one tournament, so <laughs> I wouldn't know. So you're you're one and oh and a world champion? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know that, that that's my, like, true North Star in life is I would like to be the World Hickory Champion. Okay. If you could get rid of the, the left miss, yeah. I think you could be. <laughs> the right miss. The right miss. The right miss That's is my issue. You had the left miss too. I put it in play recently. These are actually very good. They are smooth faced, but you don't, you're not gonna get it in speed anyway, so. <laughs> right. It's like no, no grooves on these clubs, which is interesting. Get it started. That's new. Is the right miss officially in play? Four, please. Big Randy now driving. Oh, cheers. Roped it. 
<laughs> All right, guys, good luck in your match. Hey, play well, fellas. Competition this season, we're going to play three rounds of qualifying, handicapped by strokes, and from that, we are going to go into match play. So whoever wins the qualifying goes to the number one seed, and whoever they play against, the difference in that seed, that's how many clubs the other person has to take out of the bag. Uh-oh. I come down? Yeah, it took a little while, but it came down. Okay. Randy's getting bitchy that we're not, you know, going going right into qualifying, but we weren't sure if everybody's clubs were gonna make it. All right, so what's the what's the format you guys like to play? Um, so we'll be doing a four-man format called Umbriago. So we'll be doing two teams. You play for four points per hole. So it's birdie, closest to the pin. It's a low score individually and low team score. Okay. And if you get all four points, then you get eight points. It okay. doubles. A little juice. Mm. And we'll play a separate match for the jacket. Yes. Cro a kroner a point? A kroner a point? And we usually do three or five. Okay. <laughs> I love it. You don't have to, you don't have to convince me. <laughs> oh, yeah, geez. let's do, let's do five. Five? Okay. Yeah, let's do five. All right, partner. Let's do it. Good luck. All right, we're going to have to figure that out. That was close. <laughs> Oh boy. You nervous? Dream start. Oh God. Team Carter. <laughs> Off to a tough start. Okay, okay. We're calibrating, it's okay. Okay, okay I can play. How does this kind of fit in with the rest of Swedish golf? It seems like an outlier. Yeah, for sure. Uh, especially as you were talking about, the, the course is very short but it can play long, depending on the wind direction. And the greens are so small that you guys, I mean, especially Neil and, and Tron, you were in the wrong places yep. so many times today. <laughs> so where many, where so if you would play times. the course once again, you would have such a different experience because you would know where not to go. The no groove situation is gonna be interesting. I think that's where I'm struggling right now, but we're gonna get it fixed. Oh, great floor, man. Is it is the course really that short? I mean, when you think about it, though, it just has more par threes, right? If you had, yeah. if you take three part, like 150 yard par threes, 160 yard par threes, make them 400 yard holes, that adds 600 yards or something to the course. Lot. So Listen, I didn't think about it. Like yeah. <laughs> oh no. Provocative. Oh! <laughs> Atta boy, big! It's like we drew it up. <laughs> yeah, easy four. Great four with a pop. That was sick. Good swing, Neil. It does feel very, very Northern California. It feels very Northern California. Not what I was expecting. I don't know why I'm topping it. I don't understand that. I, I thought the course weirdly had like super exclusive C-suite vibes mixed with like some strap vibes back there. Like it was just such a fun mixture of a lot of elements. You kept saying it felt like you were in like Northern California. It felt like you were in Boston. It felt like you were like, I don't know that I've seen a place that has that much going on. I got a lot of Claremont and then even the, this little back paddock over here. The Valley Club. The, the open, yeah. yeah. I'm so happy to hear that you guys go, oh, it's Claremont, it's, it's yeah. Mackenzie, it's... And that's what we've done. We spent so much time just creating that edge. And with the soils we have here in, in Scandinavia, we can't do it as you do in the US. We don't have the same type of grasses. We can't... Like, Jill Hans has done it brilliantly on quite a lot of courses. And there's a different type of soils and different types of grass. Warm season grasses around those edges, you can create really nice edging. You can't do that with cold season grasses. So we need to do a different technique to get the same kind of style. Massive machine, you just cut these blocks, which is like a foot wide, half a foot high, and then a foot deep. And we folded them and laid them along the edge and created that edge. And you see on some spots, we've built two, three, four layers to create like a grass wall. So it's been quite a, so I'm happy to hear that you're, yeah. You like that. Tell me about winning the World Hickory Championship. Where where was it? How'd you get involved? What's what's the deal? 
Um, so I actually won a tournament here during the summer. Got an invitation to the to the actual tournament right outside of Edinburgh. Which course? We played three courses. We played Kilspindi. Oh gosh, that place is so cool. Gallen two and Gallen three. So. Perfect hickory courses. What do you have to shoot to win? Uh, I shot minus two, I think. Where do you play college golf? I uh, played at Coastal Carolina. So how was how was the difference? <laughs> between Edinburgh and Coastal? No, between like college golf and trying to win a world hickory championship. Um, I thought I did a better job at the hickories, <laughs> to be honest. It just fit my games better. Yeah. Yeah, my tempo and the way I like to hit the ball, I guess. Um, happened to have a good week, but you won't see it today, but I normally struggle with my driver. So. <laughs> That's good. Well, keep it up. Whatever you're doing seems to be working now. <laughs> 79, but 68 adjusted. 180. Into the wind, but way downhill. Ball not flying. I have no idea how hard to hit this. The par threes, the green sites, really the par threes and the part, like a couple of the shorter par fours, green sites benched into the hills really well. Like it's just gorgeous green sites. No idea. I think go. All right. Ooh. One take wonder. Might be in play today. 167 into the wind. 50 and 60 film. Strike. Ah, that sounds good. <laughs> oh my lord. Come on in. Come on in. Go in. Go Go in. in. Oh! <laughs> that was so close, so close. Wow, what a shot, man. Thank you. We'll, yeah. we'll roll. I think that's the place to put it. <laughs> I didn't know that backstop existed. But... <laughs> what do we do now? So my uh, my brother, he lives right behind this, this tee box, like 12 steps behind where we were. So he just comes out here. So he just walks out here, yeah. And then I grew, we grew up like 300 yards that way. So we would always walk this way to school. Uh -huh. So school is right next to the eighth hole. Okay. Where, where we had kindergarten and from first to sixth grade. So yeah, been here quite a few times. Don't All make right. too many birdies now, because this has though. to last. <laughs> Look at this, the world champion is going to get us drunk and then hustle us for all we've got. <laughs> uh, all right, let's go to favorite holes. I loved like the whole back nine. I just wanted to throw out a vote for five. Five yes. was really cool. I um, thought three was the best hole in the front, but it's not my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we probably liked five for different reasons. I, I liked as a the solid- The buildings. Point. Well, yeah, the, the buildings. buildings. You play right into the apartment block back there. Uh, and then there were how many, like three different clusters of center line trees. Exactly. They, they don't look, they don't look like they're in the fairway, but if you look in the guide, the whole thing is And fairway. it's like almost a triple, you know, it's like a triple fairway almost with five, six, seven. Uh, I thought that was really cool. The next phase is creating that golf scape with tree pruming, uh, pruming them very low, uh, next to ground. Uh, and, and, and you just keep going. Are you taking out my trees on five? We might actually, yeah. <laughs> I might have to come chain myself to them. Yeah, exactly. Your favorite hole is gonna be different now. Leave one. We might leave one, yeah. 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 Randy's tree. Randy's tree, yeah. Yeah, maybe. Totally. <laughs> we'll leave one for you. Yeah, I noticed you're not writing that down. Do you want to take a note? <laughs> what do you got? 123. Okay, you're playing 120. 17. I think you have to fly it almost all the way. Okay. Sit down. Sit, sit down. Sit, sit. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> oh, great bounce. You're back in play. <laughs> all right, I think it was the first club. Hey, let me give you this yardage, this case here. <laughs> For you. Thank you. We'll switch. Whoever goes long. Yeah. You get the Icarito badge. Since Bobby Jones came over and did uh, Brohoff, what's that, 20 years ago now? Everyone started to talk about these modern courses and that's what Sweden should get to and, and create these runoffs and every Arctic was in creating runoffs. And one of the first things we started to talk about here was don't do runoffs, help people in, try and run ins instead. Because that's typical old Heathland style was to bring shots where you can actually feed the ball in, not feeding them off the greens. And that, back in the days, that was used to run water into it. 
so you could actually keep water on your grains because you didn't have irrigation at the same quality you do today. Cheeky. Oh. <laughs> You're good there. Thank you. Great spot for graffiti. <laughs> so uh, we used to have all kinds of stuff going on there, but now we, well, a couple years ago, we decided to do it ourselves. I like the eighth hole. It was blind tee shot, but as Christian was saying, you kind of, where you exit or where you enter the hole, you get to see where it's going to land and then you go back and it's blind. And uh, the gr way that green sits, we got, Randy and I had some tough, tough bounces on that green, not really yeah. knowing how far that ran away from us. thought we hit good shots and it just, the ball just rolled and yours went all the way into that bunker. Yeah. Mine got held up. Very well aware, thank you. Um, and uh, so I think I, you left your first bunker shot I did. in there. Yeah, but, I went yeah. back in its yeah. own yeah. divot. That's that was right. really fun. <laughs> that was great. Thank you for that. Up right. That works. Good shot, John. Nice. Good shot. Down. Well, could be. Real? Down. No, no. <laughs> okay. Wow. Fuck. <laughs> oh. All right. Guys, that was a shank. <laughs> oh, flash on him, TC. Woo! Hell yeah. Great shot. What an angle you created. I know. Do it. Oh. <laughs> Where, what the fuck was that? <laughs> it's good. Two, three. We were on 10 for like 50 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I lost like four balls. It was a par six. Yeah, that was. I don't think I've ever seen someone in that water on 10. Oh God, two of those in a row. Get down. Did you find the irrigation pond? It's a I did. I still made nine. <laughs> no, you fucking dildo. But it's quite interesting where you actually have a par five that is the key shot is the second shot. Right. Like normal, when, yeah. when we yeah. call that on modern golf, it's yeah, I'll go for it for, for an eagle. But this is actually a key shot, second shot to place yourself for, for an exactly approach right. shot. Uh, maybe I like 11 too. 11 might have been my favorite. 11 sweet. Yeah, you eagled that, of course. Well, you hit into the group, yeah. And <laughs> the was, guys so. were on the green. <laughs> Uh-oh. I can't even think of what hole would have possibly been drivable. The uphill to we the did right. Yeah. yeah. Right after the oh, oh, right, mental right, right. par five. Yeah. Okay. Come on. Come on, do it. Woo! A Bang! Big bird. Damn. I, I could not decide if that putt was up or downhill. Great dudes. Thank you. Hit it. Yeah, that's good, man. Oh, that's an eight. That's right. seven. That's a seven. No blood. <laughs> no blood. blood. <laughs> cool. Yeah, so this uh, used to be the tee box back in the 30s. Uh, I don't think they've used it for more than must be more than 50 years since they've used it and now we just redid it so first, first time? time first time playing it really whoa what uh, what did you shoot uh, 167 playing 149 Great strike. yeah that's pretty good, good. if i if i say the budget we have here to an american architect they would go no you did not no, 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 no. You, that, that's not, that's what you pay for a green or two. Yeah. Where's the disconnect there? I mean, how is that? I, I don't think the American customer would accept the, the trench marks and stuff like that. It would be, you would sod that. You would get it to perfection before you open up. We open up to let people out here to play golf. It's like, yeah, it's an extra 10% of the experience and it's probably 60 extra percent of the cost. Oh yeah, yeah. if even not more yeah. than that. Yeah, exactly. And and your course is going to be closed down for right. two, a three years. Yeah, a year exactly. or two more. Yeah. yeah. Like a membership here, I don't know, with 600 euros, 700 euros? Yeah, like seven, seven. 700 euros for a year. Yeah. Growing grass is from beginning of May to end of September here. So if you're going to build a golf course, you can't build in the winter, you've got frozen ground. So it's, it's going to close even further. It's probably going to be four years to open up with high, high quality. So you guys are down what? How many? 13 points? No, no uh, 12 kroner. 12? No, you're down. No, we were at nine. 120 kroner. Oh, yeah. 
twelve dollars essentially. You worried about the cash? No. As long as I keep that jacket. Stay one up. I'm one up on you. It's one, a, one, another one of your strokey holes. It's a bit like live. It's there's some things are worth a lot more than money. That's right. Know? Oh, great. Oh, be good, right, please. please. Please be good. Be the number. Go in. Oh. 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 Hey. Whoa. Ooh. Big Finally. Pie. That was nice that birdie. was an expensive one, huh? <laughs> that was an expensive one. Could be great. Stamp. Oh. Get in! Oh. oh god! I had like two or three close calls today. <laughs> Got the heart rate going there a little bit. Not enough stay. Love. Hold your head. Stay. It's either that or I Nuke the other one over green. <laughs> Sick. Good match, Deej. <laughs> that was so fucking stupid. I'm very upset right now. That's cool. Good match. Good, great match. Good stuff. Always Get you that jacket. Truly always a, a highlight of the year, Neil. <laughs> oh, oh. Great, great match, my friend. <laughs> Thank you. you earned that one. You know what I think is a great invention? Grooves. <laughs> Very cool. Like whoever came up with the idea to have grooves on the club face was a, was a thinking outside the box. Cash. Mm -hmm. Wow. Just not our day, Chief. That's stacking Blast kroners. Right there. <laughs> Come on. Come on. <laughs> mean spirited. Oh, Thank you. Man. So much fun. What a fun. thrill. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Partner, anytime. Hi. That was great. So what an awesome, awesome, awesome golf course. So as we were planning this trip, I reached out to Jacob, Jacob Showman. He's a internationally renowned Swedish photographer, like of the top 30 courses in the country. I think he does stuff for the collateral and their websites and their scorecards for like 28 of them. So he's, he's, he's a good guy to know in Sweden. And so reached out to him just to assess whether this is feasible, to assess, hey, what's, you know, are we on the right track with these courses? I got to know him going through this process and I wanted to show the guys the archipelago. We looked at going to like Sandham and taking a ferry and he said, no, like I've got a place. Archipelago, I think I could get very used to the archipelago. Yeah, Sweden's a thousand islands, but until you experience what it's like to get around exclusively by boat. It's like back in the States, people that go off to the lake house and it's one of the, the best parts of summer, in my opinion, right? You, you get away from the hustle and bustle, kind of get more out into nature. <laughs> oh, yep. Sorry. Hey. <laughs> okay, yep, <laughs> up on board. It's kind of tough to explain it if, and you know, we'll lay the video over this, but like the, a floating sauna. Here we go. Here comes a cold beer. Get up on the rock. Uh oh, cheers. <laughs> Come on, big boy. <laughs> Good? Ah! <laughs> I think the floating sauna is just hard to explain what a, a good combination that is. Sauna is not hot. 
It is spaghetti and meatballs. It's hot and cold. You can't have one without the other. Very specific about that. The, the saunas, man, could get used to the to the cycle. The, the hot sauna, the cool water, it was just so refreshing. The sound, action. <laughs> oh, sorry, I wasn't filming, need another shot. <laughs> one more time for safety. <laughs> It's simpler and you could just feel that, man, it, it's all about family and connecting with people and being present with people. And, and I think, you know, for the night, I really felt those same feelings. You know, it, it, we were deep into the night, you know, up on top of the world almost in, in a really cool place. And I think that energy just flowed through everybody. It was a, it was a really, really special night. Life was good. Life was good that evening. <laughs>